Hi everyone. So we now know and understand that a fraction is part of a whole number and a decimal is also part of a whole number. So if I had a whole pie or a whole pizza here and I ate one, two, three, I ate three pieces of a whole of a, of a whole number, okay, or a whole pie or a whole pizza. So if I was to write that as a fraction, showing that part of a number, part of a whole number, that would be three tenths, okay, because I have ten pieces. And if I was to show that as a decimal, we know that that would be a zero, a decimal point, and a three. Okay, so that's just recapping what we've just done. So we've got three tenths as a fraction, three tenths as a decimal. And I'm also showing three tenths in a picture form as well. Now, my, our next step here is to then show it in a table. Okay, and that was what Miss, Miss O'Neill was trying to do with you for the last couple of days. Let's have a look at this table here. So we're very familiar with our tables of hundreds, tens, and ones, or ones, tens, and hundreds. We usually say it that way. Now, if I was to put a one here and a two here, I know that number is 12 because I have 10, one 10 and two ones. If I was to say that uh, if I had a three here, a six here, and a um, zero here, Okay, I know that that number is 360 because I have three hundreds, six tens, and zero ones. Now, what has happened is this table actually extends this A. So we know it keeps going further with thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions, but we're not going to even worry about that. Okay, we're just going to concentrate on ones, tens, and hundreds. Now, when we're looking at a whole number and then a fraction or a, or a part of a number, we need a decimal place. So that's where that comes in here on our table. And then we go, kind of go backwards. So we go tenths, then we go <coughs> hundredths, and then we go thousands, etc. So we're going backwards that way. So see how we go one, tens, hundreds and then this we going this back this way we've got tens and hundreds so it's a little bit of a pattern so when i'm showing this so I'll wrap, wrap this out when i'm showing this as a decimal then using my table i'm not showing going to need the whole numbers section i am going to need this part of the section the fraction part of the section so because I don't have a whole number, I don't need this one. I'm just looking at the tenths column. Do I need the hundredths? No, because we're not looking at hundredths. We're looking at tenths. Okay, so when I'm doing, just like my decimal here, I have zero whole numbers, a decimal point, and then three tenths. Okay, if I was to change this and went... Five tenths, so I have one, two, three, four, five pieces. Five tenths is a fraction. So that would mean that my decimal would be five tenths like this. I would show it and I'd say I have zero holes because I haven't eaten a whole pie yet. And I've only eaten five pieces of that pie. So I've only eaten five tenths. All right, let's do another one. Let's do um, six, seven. So I've eaten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of my pie. All right, so as a fraction, maybe you could write it as a fraction. Have a go. If I ate seven pieces of my pie, what would that look like as a fraction? All right, so as a fraction, it would look like a seven over ten, a ten, seven tenths. What would that look like as a decimal if I had seven tenths? Zero 
a decimal point and a seven, just like we've been doing the last two slides. But we're now just showing this number in a table. So I don't have a whole one here, but I do have part of one. I've got seven tenths. So I've got zero holes, the point. So that's where that zero comes in. And then seven tenths. Okay. On the next slide, you are going to be given something like this. Okay, so you're going to have something that looks like this. So you've got your table here, all right, and then you've got some questions that you're going to do to fill in this table. Now, you have the decimal places already put there for you, so that should be able to help. Now, remember, we're just looking at tenths. So we're really only looking at this column here, but I wanted to put the extra columns in, okay, just so you knew that it got it does expand. All right, but really you're just focusing on tenths and you're really just making sure that you have zeros in this column, okay? So let's have a look at exa the example for number one. So 0 0.6, to show that in the table, I would go, I might write it in red actually, a zero, I've already got my point, six, which is six tenths as we know. Seven tenths, now this is where it might get a little bit trickier because we've written it as a word rather than um, as the decimal, but we're going to turn it into a decimal using the table. So seven tenths would look like this. Okay. Where do you think I would put the zero for two tenths for number three? That's right, the ones column. Where would I put the two? On the other side of the decimal, it's showing me my tenths, my part of a number. It's less than one whole number. Okay, that's why it's a tenth. Five tenths. Where would I, what would I do? to show five tenths as a decimal. So I'd need a zero in the ones column because I don't have a whole number, I only have part of a number, just like in our um, pie or pizza, however you, or cake, however you want to do it. I've only got part of a whole pie, okay? so. I'd would need zero, sorry, zero, and a five, good. I've got five tenths, five out of 10 pieces. Okay, have a go. You're doing to do something very similar to this. I've already filled in the first two for you on that next slide, um, which is why I've put example there. So you know, and then these two are already filled in for you. And so then you really only have one, two, three, four. I think there might be five that you need to fill in. Have a go. And again, if you have any questions, please write them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Great job today. We've done a lot of work. Well done.